trying to go through the whole thing. We'll see how, how long that takes. Um, this is my first shelf. It goes down two more. I'll probably cut in some videos right here of like some wide angles so you can see all the movies. Uh, but then I have another shelf over on the other side of my desk. And then I have a bookshelf with my TV shows on it. So we'll be trying to get through all that today. Um, I'll be, it's mostly going to be a whispering video. Um, so yeah. And, uh, some tapping. I got some steel books here and, um, yeah, these are sort of my superhero movies and, um, Disney and comedy section. So like more family friendly oriented. And then on the other side, I have the movies that I love. Um, so yeah, if you want to skip to those movies and you're not really if you don't really care about any of these movies, then I'll, I'll have a timestamp down below of, of um, when I switch to that side. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first things that I have up here are um, Fantastic Beasts movies. Now these are over here because um, I love Harry Potter, but I'm not a huge fan of these movies. Um, I did get them on 4K because they turned out to be cheap on 4K, so I got them. Uh, I like the first one a lot better than the second one, and I was really hopeful after the first one came out that the second one would be good, and um, I actually haven't seen the third one. Uh, but yeah, those are those movies. Obviously, my Harry Potter collection's on the other side. Next up, we have a movie that doesn't even belong here. It's actually in the wrong place. It's supposed to be down there. Uh, but The Magnificent Seven, it's a remake of the original Magnificent Seven. Um, it's a fun movie, decent western, uh, and they don't make a lot of westerns anymore, so it was cool to see a modern western. Um, so yeah, kind of a fun movie. Next up, we have an absolute classic for me. This is the Spider-Man original trilogy. This is the Sam Raimi ones uh, with Tobey Maguire, and these are absolutely my favorite Spider-Man. Um, they're the ones that I grew up with. Uh, every year I would go back to my grandma's house, and she had these, and it was the only time that I could watch them, because I was like four, and my mom wouldn't let me watch them, but it was awesome. And Spider-Man 2 is probably the best superhero movie ever made, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, there's those. And this is a UK import. Um, you can get a better set now. I just haven't. Uh, I think you can get them in 4K, which is probably what I'll do eventually. But yeah, I love these movies. Next up, we have more Spider-Man. These are the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Um, this is just a regular Blu-ray one. Um, uh, and then this is the 3D one. I've never actually watched it in 3D. Well, maybe I have, actually. I don't know. One of my friends had a 3D TV, and we might have watched it. I think we did actually watch it on 3D. But, yeah, that was cool. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these movies. I thought that Andrew Garfield was a fantastic Spider-Man, um, but a very unusual Peter Parker. He was too cool. Uh, I love Andrew Garfield, but he was too cool to be Peter Parker. And that's one thing that I love about... His Peter Parker was magnificent, and that was sort of the focus of those movies. Um, other than the awesome fight scenes that look better than anything uh, that Tom Holland Spider-Man has done. Don't sue me. Um, next up we have... The Spider-Verse movies. I love the first one. I, I bought the second one, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, my siblings had, and have, and they said that it's fantastic, so I'll probably watch that uh, soon, coming up like in the next week or something, and I'm very excited about it because the first one was amazing, uh, and I saw it in theaters, and I was very happy that I did. Next up, well, I said family-friendly, but this is not really family-friendly, but it is superhero. Uh, we got Deadpool 1 and 2. Um, this Deadpool version is the 4K on a unicorn. It's like the 80s retro slipcover. And then just the regular version of Deadpool 2. I like these movies. I think Deadpool 2 is better than Deadpool 1. I don't know what other people's opinions are on these movies, really, so... Um, but yeah, I love them both. I think they're great movies, fun movies. Um, obviously they're very adult, so if, ask your parents if you can watch it. <laughs> Next up we have Logan. Uh, it's part of the Deadpool thing. Um, this is a exclusive slipcover. It's got, I don't know if you can 
uh, Logan's hand, but Deadpool's holding it. Uh, it's like a special Deadpool slipcover, I don't know, but um, I'm not a huge fan of this movie. I think that it could have been so much better, but a lot of people love it, and if you do, then I'm happy for you, but um, it was just a little too slow for me, and that's coming from somebody who loves slow movies. So, yeah, and there's some huge exposition dumps in this movie that I found sort of distracting, but yeah. Next up, we have the Iron Man trilogy. Uh, the first Iron Man is iconic, uh, sort of defined a generation and changed movies forever, for better or worse. Um, but I like, I like the first Iron Man a lot. The second one was okay, I think. If I'm remembering right, and I haven't seen the third one. Uh, these were given to me as a gift, and I never got around to watching the third one, but I've heard mixed reviews. I don't know. I love Iron Man 1. It's a great movie, and was huge for me when I was a kid, so yeah, Iron Man. Now we're sort of into my MCU collection, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of the MCU. It has some good movies and some interesting movies, but they very much devolved into kind of terrible movies, in my opinion. If you enjoy them, again, that's great. I'm not racking on it. I love that people like different movies. Um, some people get offended, like, if you don't like something that they like or like something that they don't. Um, I think it's cool. Um, it's what makes film great, is that there's so many different movies and so many different opinions. Um, but, yeah. Um... I think my favorite movie in the MCU is probably Captain America, which is one that I don't have because it's so expensive to get a lot of them in the versions that I would want them in. Um, so I just pretty much buy MCU movies if they're on sale. Um, again, if you love them, that's great. So going into the MCU, I have The Incredible Hulk, the original um, 2008 or 2007 one. I don't know. Um, this movie is a mixed bag for me. I love the original Incredible Hulk uh, with Bill Bixby, like the TV show with Lou Ferrigno and Bill Bixby. Um, and this movie, like, acted like it was kind of like that. I, I don't know, it was a mixed bag. It felt like they didn't really know what they were doing. But the Hulk, I think, is actually the coolest in this one. He looks the best as far as cool-wise, not CGI-wise. But uh, And then Civil War. Uh, this movie was cool. Uh, when it came out, there's a couple things that I don't really like about it. Um, and I feel like this is where they kind of lost their way a little bit. Um, but, I don't know. It's a good movie. It's the first one with Tom Holland, Spider-Man. Um, so, yeah, that was cool to see. Next up, we have the first and second Avengers. Um, I like both of these movies okay. I'm not a huge fan of them. Um, I don't want to downplay how what the MCU has done for building a universe. It's super unique to, to build a universe like that. Maybe not anymore, but at the time it was like unprecedented and awesome. Um, so to see it come to its peak in Avengers was really cool. Next up we have Doctor Strange. I thought this movie was um, really unique uh, for the uh, MCU at the time. I felt like it was pretty cool, did a lot of cool things, and I like Benedict Cumberbatch. I felt like, I felt like it had a lot of cool scenes in it, and, um, the CGI was alright. <laughs> uh, but yeah, fun movie, cool, cool sequences in it, so yeah, I bought that one. It was on sale, so I bought it. Next up we have, I, I think this is the only Tom Holland Spider-Man that I own, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. I saw this movie in theaters, and I thought it was great, um, and it is, it's, it's pretty good, it's a pretty good Spider-Man movie, um, it's definitely not my favorite, I, I love the Sam Raimi Spider-Man's the best, um, but yeah, I liked this movie, I think it was good, I think Tom Holland was, um, a, a pretty good pick for Spider-Man, um, but yeah, good movie trying to think of something else that I would say about it, but I don't really have. Okay, here's a, a mixed bag for me. Uh, it's a Batman the Killing Joke. This is an animated version of one of the most iconic Batman comic books, and it uh, pretty much is the comic book except for the beginning, which is really weird that they put it in. I get why they put it in, but they should have just made like a 
of the second half of this movie and released it. It was cool to see Kevin Conroy and um, uh, Mark Hamill return to their roles. I love the Batman animated series, and um, yeah, it was cool to see this version of it. Next up, we have one of the most shocking movies I've ever seen. As far as it being good, I thought this movie was going to be terrible. Um, but it turned out to be one of the best movies of 2019, I think. I don't know when it came out. But yeah, it was fantastic. Wonderfully made. The, the acting in it was fantastic. And um, yeah, it was, it was just a blast um, to see. And I was very excited that this was good. I'm, I'm looking forward to the second one. Next up, we have another Batman animated movie, Batman Under the Red Hood. Uh, this movie is pretty cool, uh, fun uh, movie that I saw a while back. And yeah, I like it. Next week, I'm just going to go through these really quick because I'm not a fan of these, but I got a steelbook of the Suicide Squad, the, the first one, so just Suicide Squad, um, because it was like $5. This isn't a very good movie, but... Then I got uh, Batman v Superman. I thought this movie was probably the best in the MC or in the DCU, um, but I haven't seen all of them. So, and then Man of Steel, which is very long, and I'm not a very big fan of Superman. But yeah. Next up, we have the Dark Knight series uh, or trilogy. Excuse me, um, the Christopher Nolan one. The best Batman, uh, I think, in my opinion. Um, it has the legendary Heath Ledger as the Joker, which is iconic and um, almost no. I don't. I don't know if anybody will ever um, be as iconic as the Joker again. So, yeah, classic. Okay, next we have. I'm gonna do this a little quicker because most of these are just. Disney movies or DreamWorks movies. These are kids' movies. And I mainly have these for my younger siblings and uh, my nieces and nephews. Um, but yeah, let's go rapid, rapid. This is like some of my DreamWorks collections with matching slipcovers. We got Over the Hedge, a classic movie for my family. Um, Prince of Egypt, possibly the best animated film of all time. It's just, it even, it's just so good. Spirit, possibly one of the greatest animated movies of all time. It's amazing, and hands down one of the best soundtracks ever made. And then we got, obviously, Shrek. <laughs> okay. Then we got some more DreamWorks movies. We got Megamind. This movie's hilarious and awesome, and most people like it, but if you don't, why? I guess. But it's a very good movie. Dragon trilogy. I love How to Train Your Dragon. I think the first one is in the running for best 3D animated movie and just one of the best movies of all time. I was I saw commercials for so long for this movie and I was like, that looks so weird. And I don't know why it's called How to Train Your Dragon. And then I watched it and was blown away. The soundtrack, the animation, the writing, it was just phenomenal. And the second one, Again, I saw the commercial, so I was like, there's no way it's going to be as good as the first one. And it's not as good as the first one, but it is good. And then the third one, I don't really remember. I saw it in theaters, and I remember thinking it was good. So I think it's good, but it's not as good as the first and second one. And it does take me off that they released it like this. It doesn't match any of the other copies, and it's not called Out of Train Dragon 3. It's just called Out of Train Dragon in World. So a little weird, but... Next, we have Kung Fu Panda 1 and 2. Uh, these movies are fantastic. I think the first one is just amazing, phenomenal. Um, blew my mind when I watched it. Uh, but my version has some sticker damage because stores decide to put stickers on Blu-rays with slipcovers. I don't know why, but it, it's so frustrating. Uh, but yeah, the second one is very good as well. I thought that that movie wasn't going to be good because most sequels to animated movies are just eh, but Kung Fu Panda 2 was very good. Now we're moving into my Disney section. Uh, um, we're going to start out with some Disney Princess. 
princess movies. Uh, Mulan, which is fantastic. Easily the best Disney princess movie, even though she's not really a princess. I love this movie. Um, it just reminds me of my childhood. Classic. Um, and then Pocahontas, which I didn't watch this one as much as a kid, but also a good movie. And this actually has both of them. It has Mulan 1 and 2. And Pocahontas 1 and 2, which I haven't seen. These are the sequels. So, okay. Next up, we have 101 Dalmatians. Um, this is an anniversary edition, or limited release edition. Um, so, that's cool. One of my special ones that I have. Um, I've I like this movie. Uh, my sister loves this movie. Um, but, yeah. I like this movie a lot. Classic. And then hands down, my favorite princess Disney princess movie is Beauty and the Beast. This movie horrified me as a child. Um, and it still, it just is so cool. Um, the Beast's entrance is, I don't, I don't know. The Beast is just so cool. Um, but yeah. Then we have Aladdin. Uh, classic. Uh, Robin Williams uh, was awesome in this movie. Uh, we got Lion King here. Um, and then Bolt. Too. Well, I don't really. Bolt's alright. I got a great deal on this. Um, and The Lion King is just classic. It's not my favorite Disney movie or anything, but still good. We got Tangled, which is a very good princess movie. Tangled, 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 Tangled. Very good princess movie. A lot of fun, a blast. Um, and then Moana, which is also a pretty good princess movie. What the heck was that? I don't know what that was. It was a monster in my closet for sure. Okay, then we got two of the most underrated movies. Well, Emperor's New Groove and Croc's New Groove. Um, I don't know if they're necessarily underrated. Um, Emperor's New Groove is amazing. Uh, it, it's just such a good... I don't know how the film got made, honestly. It's like the last 2D animated movie other than Croc's New Groove that Disney came out with. Uh, and then we have <laughs> such an underrated movie, Treasure Planet. This movie is so cool. Uh, it's so cool. I, I don't know. I always saw commercials for it as a kid and was like, oh, that movie looks sick. And then um, finally watched it and it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, then we got Oliver and Company and Robin Hood. Not a lot that I can say about these. Oliver and Company, Billy Joel is one of my favorite artists. Um, and he killed it in this movie. The soundtrack is so good. Um, and then uh, Robin Hood is just classic for me. It's one of them. We watched it so much as a kid. Uh, but I love it, yeah. Now we're getting into the like live action era of Disney movies where they were just making a bunch of live action movies. This is Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It was huge when it came out. And this is... I think my favorite one in the trilogy. I actually do like Prince Caspian. A lot of people don't, but I thought Prince Caspian was pretty cool. Um, but this one's probably my favorite. There we got. Now some of you are gonna hate on me for this, but Tron Legacy. Holy moly. I love this movie. I know it's not. I know the writing isn't perfect. I know it's not a perfect movie. It's far from a perfect movie, but if you just want a cool movie that looks better than 80% of movies made today, this movie, and then the soundtrack. Oh, they got Daft Punk on the soundtrack. They really did something with this movie, and um, it just looks amazing. I know them acting is a little spotty, <laughs> and there's a lot, and there's a lot wrong with it. Um, but, uh, I think it's fantastic. I love this movie. And if I ever got picked up and was, if somebody was like, hey, we want you to make a TV show, I would get the production designer from this. I would get Daft Punk and we would make the greatest television, live action television show ever made. Um, I think Tron has so much potential and this movie just scratched the surface of it. So I love that movie. Next, another movie. 
movie that is not very good, um, but I don't really like this one. So. This is Prince of Persia. Uh, this was like the first PG-13 movie I saw, I think, um, and so it's kind of cool for me because it was like, whoa, and I was like eight when I watched it or something. I don't know when did it come out. I was like eight, I don't know, but it was really awesome, and I, I, I think it's a, a fun movie. It's not very good. It has its moments. And then we got two movies that I love to death, mainly the first one, but National Treasure 1 and 2. National Treasure is such a good movie. If you don't like this movie, I don't know why. It's such a fun movie. I can't say enough about National Treasure. I think it's fantastic, and I think during this era of movies, people were spoiled a lot. I mean, you had Pirates of the Caribbean coming out, yet. National Treasure, you got Tron, so many things were coming out that were actually good, and you look at the movies coming out today, it's, it's different. Then we got a movie that I haven't seen in ages, but I watched all the time as a kid, uh, The Rookie. Um, I don't know what this movie is like, I really don't remember it much, I remember just the part where he throws the, uh, baseball past the, like, the speed check sign or whatever like glitches out and it's actually way faster than I don't know it's a fun movie family friendly uh next another movie that people really hate <laughs> but I like um The Lone Ranger uh, I know why people don't like this movie it has a lot of issues um but it's a fun movie it's not necessarily really good but it's a fun movie uh to watch um every once in a while it is really long my dad really likes this movie, so it's something that I can watch with him that's special, and it's always fun. Alright, I probably need to pick up the pace. These next ones, probably the rarest thing in my collection right here, is the Rogue One Steelbook. This took me forever to get, uh, because they sold out so fast, and it was really hard to get. Um, but I got it, finally, uh, and I'm really proud of that. And I like this movie. This is one of the Disney movies that Star Wars, Star Wars Disney movies that I actually like. Uh, but yeah, I got that. And I wanted it really bad because all my Star Wars movies I have, or all the good Star Wars movies that I have, are on Steelbook. And so I wanted it to match at the time. Um, next we have The Force Awakens, a good movie. I thought it was great seeing it in theaters, was legendary in my mind, and I'll never forget it. And another movie that I'll never forget seeing in theaters, The Last Jedi, but for very different reasons. I'm not going to talk about it. Let's just say after The Last Jedi, I knew Star Wars was dead. I knew it was dead. I do have Rise of Skywalker. I don't know why. I don't know why. And then, but in my opinion, listen, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. If you like The Last Jedi, I'm happy for you. I wish I could for the better part of that month that The Last Jedi came out. Over and over, I would try and convince myself that it was good. Um, but then I went to see it again in theaters, and then again, and it, I was like, this movie isn't, it's not good, and... I've come to the opinion now that it is my least favorite movie of all time, and I think one of the worst made movies of all time. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. Ryan Johnson has done legendary things. He, he took part in making Breaking Bad. I don't know what happened with the movie, but it's terrible. It's a disgrace to Star Wars. And I'm sorry if I'm hurting feelings. I wanted to keep this video really neutral. But I'm very opinionated about that. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. Um, okay, next up, Santa Claus. We're getting into my Christmas section. It's down on the next shelf. I don't know what this is doing here. But Santa Claus. Classic movie for my family. Uh, my dad uh, loves Tim Allen. And this was one, I think, that my grandma got us started on. So, yeah. Fun movie. Good movie. Um, next we got... A trilogy that means a lot to me and that I think that a lot of people, I don't know, don't give enough credit. And that's the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy. Um, I think the third movie at World's
Charles End is one of the best movies ever made. And I know that might be shocking to a lot of people because of how iconic the first one is. But the third one, to me, is such a groundbreaking movie. They don't make movies like this anymore. And you may be sitting there and be like, oh, they make movies like this all the time. This movie has the best CGI of any movie, like, ever. There is not a single frame of this movie that looks bad. Not a single one. And I get there's some story issues with it. But overall, this movie is just so epic. It is so good. And if you haven't watched it in a while, I recommend going back and watching the second and third one. Because I love them. They're amazing. So, yeah, I don't Okay, next we're back into Disney animated movies. These are the, my Pixar um, section. Uh, we're going to start out with uh, Toy Story. I think this is a UK import, um, but it was a great deal, and so I bought it. Um, the first two are amazing. The third one is okay. Uh, it was one of the f first movies I saw in theaters, I believe. Um, so that was a good one for me to go see in theaters. Next up, we got Coco. Good movie. Ratatouille. Amazing movie. And up, another good movie. I think out of these, Ratatouille is my favorite. Next we got Cars. A good movie. I like this one. Finding Nemo. A classic movie with probably my favorite piano piece ever written. It's just Nemo's Egg song at the beginning of the movie. Look it up on piano. It's beautiful. It's like 30 seconds long, but it, I don't know, it hits me in the feels every time. Next up, we got Incredibles. The Incredibles. I have this on a steelbook, and this is a great steelbook. It sounds nice. But yeah, this movie is amazing. I love The Incredibles. It's just iconic and classic, and yeah. And then we have the second Incredibles, uh, another a, a decent follow-up. I didn't like it as much as a lot of people did, but I thought it was a fun movie. Um, but yeah. Now we have the Ice Age collection. I don't know how many this comes with. It comes with four. It comes with the four Ice Age movies. I think there's another one. Uh, but my favorite out of these is probably Dawn of the Dinosaurs. Um, I know I don't think it was received super well, like critically or people, but I love it. Um, so, yeah. Next up, we have the Lego movie, the Lego Batman movie, and Lego Ninjago. Uh, obviously, the Lego movie is the best out of these. Um, followed up by Batman Lego movie, and then the Ninjago movie wasn't very good. I don't know why they didn't just make it with the actual lore of Ninjago instead of something different. I don't know. Next we got Balto, a classic movie. Um, yeah, I, I watched this movie so much as a kid, you have no idea. Okay, I think... I think that is it for the Disney movies. Um, now it's some more animated movies, more artistic ones. I got a couple here. I got Spirited Away on Steelbook. This movie's amazing. Blew me away when I watched it. I watched it a couple years ago. Um, and it's just, it's awesome. By far the best Studio Jubilee movie. Uh, and then Coraline. This movie is iconic to me. It means Halloween. Uh, and I love it. It's just a feel-good movie. And then Kubo and the Two Strings. I actually have this, um, I don't know, 3D slipcase thing. Uh, but yeah, I love this movie. It's awesome. Uh, and the animation. I can't imagine undertaking something like that. I think I would lose my mind. Then we got one of the most underrated movies of all time. The Adventures of Tintin. Now, this movie is so crazy that it got made. You start looking at the people behind this movie, it's mind-blowing. They got Steven Spielberg and Peter Jackson directing this movie. You got Andy Serkis in charge of the 
motion capture on this movie and he's acting in it. Then you have the script written by Stephen Moffat and Edgar Wright. Is that not crazy? Those people are legendary. I, I don't know how this movie didn't get more attention. The animation is jaw-dropping. The action is stupendous. The, uh, this was one movie that I knew was long when I was watching it, but I was so sad when it ended. Um, yeah, awesome movie. If you haven't seen it, go watch it, because it's just crazy. Next we have a movie. Um, just a fun movie, Lemony Snicket. Um, series of unfortunate events. This movie's really fun. Uh, and obviously Jim Carrey is was born to play that part of the main guy. I don't remember his name. It's it's escaping me at the moment. <laughs> Next we have something from my childhood that's iconic and I actually still do really like. I think it's an amazing kids movie. Uh, Spy Kids 1 and 2 and then the third one is was really cool when I was a kid but <laughs> for obvious reasons it's not as good as it was when I was younger. Okay. Next I got a whole bunch of Christmas movies. I'm just going to go through pretty quickly here. I got the Santa Claus Trilogy. Alright. I got Elf. Classic. The animated How the Grinch Stole Christmas. The live action How the Grinch Stole Christmas with Jim Carrey. This movie I think I like better than the animated one. Um, it's just classic. I love it. Um, every year we would go on vacation and we would watch that. So I might be blinded by a little bit of nostalgia, but I love that movie very much. Next, we got some more Christmas movies. We got uh, Charlie Brown. Well, this is more seasonal, not just Christmas, but we got the Charlie Brown um, set. It's got the Great Pumpkin, the Christmas one, and the Thanksgiving ones. Um, but yeah, that's really good. And then we got Die Hard, which may be a little out of place, but this is a Christmas movie. And then we got It's a Wonderful Life, uh, probably my favorite Christmas movie. Um, I love it. I think it's one of the best movies ever made. Um, but yeah. And then we got Home Alone. Uh, this is like the VHS slipcover. I think Walmart did it. It was either Walmart or Meyer, but yeah. It was a really good deal, so I bought it. Okay, moving on to the bottom shelf down here. I have Anchorman 1 and 2. This is like my comedy shelf. Um, these movies are ridiculous, uh, but I watched them with my sister one time when I was over at her house, and we had a blast watching them, and yeah, I like these movies. They're fun. Next we got Dumb and Dumber. Now you might be thinking I'm a huge Jim Carrey fan. Uh, I just, he's just in a lot of movies. <laughs> this is the Good Burger Steelbook. I bought it at Walmart, uh, not knowing that it was completely shattered on the side. Um, I didn't return it because I thought it was kind of hilarious that it was broken. Because if the people from Good Burger made a steel book, this is exactly how they would release it. Absolutely in shambles. So, yeah. But that movie's hilarious. Next we got um, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I haven't seen the other one. The Bogus Journey. I haven't seen that one. Then we got Office Space. Classic. Princess Bride. Now this one is a cult classic, but if you're homeschooled, you know that homeschoolers will not shut up about this movie. <laughs> but obviously, it's iconic, classic, great cult film. Then we got Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, cl another classic. And then we got Nacho Libre. I love Jack Black. I think he's hilarious. Uh, and I especially love him in this movie. Uh, this movie wasn't as well received as Napoleon Dynamite, but I think it was very good, and it's like my mom's favorite movie. <laughs> okay. Next up we have the Napoleon Dynamite. I don't know what edition this is. It's like a digibook edition. Um, but it's actually... You can hear it's like a felt material on it. It sounds very good. Uh, but yeah, I love this movie. It's one of my favorite, like, cult films. Um, then we have a movie that is hugely underrated. Weird Al's UHF. Um, this movie's amazing. If you haven't gone, seen it, go see it. Especially if you like Weird Al, you gotta watch this movie. Or if you like, like, Napoleon Dynamite and any of that. 
that stuff. All right, then we have the Iron Giant. Good movie. Um, the Great, what is it? An American Tale, Five Old Goes West. I love this movie. I think it's awesome. Uh, I hadn't seen the first one in a long time, but I, the first one's good too. Um, but the second one's really cool. Hoodwinked, a horribly animated, awesome film um, with a good soundtrack. And then Captain Underpants, uh, a very immature but funny movie. Um, we got Despicable Me, another kid's movie. Uh, it's hilarious. I love this one. By far the best. Um, uh, this next section is, like, not organized at all. It's movies that I didn't want to put over with my really good movies. Um, and some that are just not organized. <laughs> so, okay, okay. We got Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Um, not a huge fan of this movie. But I bought it before I watched it, so I still have it. Uh, Lincoln, a good movie. Um, that's really long. And then we have Birds. Uh, I was really disappointed with Birds. Um, but, yeah, it's classic. Then we got a whole bunch of, like, mismatched movies that are maybe part of a series, but... Oh, I don't know what this is doing. Okay, but we got Star Trek and the Darkness. Um, really the only Star Trek movie I've seen, I'm pretty sure. Um, which I know, if you're a Trekkie, I'm sorry. I, I probably will get around to watching all the Star Trek movies eventually. Um, and then and then there were none. This is an Acorn uh, miniseries of Agatha Christie's, and then there were none, and it is fantastic. If you love Agatha Christie, or if you just like good mysteries, um, or great acting and filming, go watch this movie. Uh, and then Hunger Games Catching Fire, the only Hunger Games that I felt like I wanted to own. Um, and then Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, which is a movie that my dad liked and said that I should get, and I bought and watched it and didn't really care for it. <laughs> Next up, we have Pride and Prejudice, an excellent uh, love movie, I guess, romance movie. Some people might think this is a girly movie, but I think it's just a great movie. Then we have The Matrix Trilogy. Now, don't worry, I have a better edition of just the first Matrix, but I do actually like The Matrix Reloaded. Uh, I think it's much better than people say that it is, but the third one is about on par with what people say that it is. Um, and then Godzilla. Do I have two Godzilla's? Because I'm pretty sure Godzilla's over there, too. I don't know. Alright, but those are those. And then I have the first movie that I ever got. This was a gift from my sister when I was sick one year for my birthday, and she bought me Spider-Man 2 on DVD. Uh, and, yeah, ever since then, I wanted to start a collection, so I did. Um, but... Spider-Man 2 is amazing and one of my favorite movies, so, yeah. And then that is it for this side of the movies. I hope you're enjoying so far. We're about to get into the good ones. Um, so, yeah, here we go. Okay, here we are on the other side of my desk. Um, these are all the good, uh, uh, my favorite movies that I have. Um, uh, so let's hop right into it. I'll try and go quick because this video is going to run a little bit too long if I don't speed things up a little bit. All right, first I have a mixed-reviewed trilogy, the Hobbit trilogy. Some people really hate it. I don't know many people that like it, but I um, actually really like it. Um, I went to see it in theaters with my dad and a couple friends, uh, each one, uh, and I really enjoyed it. And the extended edition, these are all the extended edition, but the extended edition of Battle of Five Armies is amazing. And if you haven't seen it, go watch it. And it's R, so you'll have to ask your parents. Okay, next we have Lord of the Rings uh, Trilogy. This is all the extended. I've actually never seen the non-extended. Um, there is some stuff that I would take out of the extended edition that I know is extended. But this movie, these movies are just iconic. And um, they change cinema and CGI and movies forever. And uh, yeah, one of the best of all time. Then we have a movie that quite possibly is perfect. And that's Back to the Future. This is actually the Back to the Future trilogy. This is the Digi book. Um, and it's it's very good. Um, I love the first Back to the Future. It's incredible. And uh, Sheep Number Two's favorite movie, or at least top two. Uh, but it's definitely in my, like, top five. So, yeah. Next we have the Indiana Jones Complete Adventures. Uh, it's the UK import. Um, 
and I got a good deal with it on it. I'm not a huge fan of Indiana Jones. Uh, the Last, Cru Last Crusade is probably my favorite. Um, this also comes with the fourth one, but we won't talk about that. Now I have, I have Jurassic World or Jurassic Park collection. Um, this is specifically the um, Jurassic Park um, or Jurassic World 2 uh, steelbook. Um, it comes with all five of the movies that were out at the time. I haven't seen the third um, Jurassic World, um, but yeah, um, I actually have a better set um, of this in my closet that I don't know how to have out in here, but I'll probably switch back to it. I was gonna buy the new version with all six of the movies if the new one was good, but I haven't gotten around to seeing it, so um, obviously the first Jurassic Park is another movie that's in my running for perfect film. I love it. It's incredible. And then, as you can see, my Star Wars collection. Start out with the prequels. Now, I can't say enough about Star Wars. I love it. It is my childhood. Um, all of them. Well, all six of them. Um, you've already heard my opinions on the sequels, but I know a lot of people don't like the prequels. There's a lot of reasons for it. I love the prequels. I think they're amazing movies. Um, they changed a lot and made way for a lot of things, like even Jar Jar Binks, who is notoriously bad, made way for Gollum and Lord of the Rings. Um, if you watch behind the scenes of both movies, you'll see the similarities, and even in the behind the scenes of Lord of the Rings, they say, we want to do Jar Jar Binks, but take it a step further, so cool stuff. Um, I love, I think the storytelling in the prequels is amazing, but, and there's a lot to dissect. It's not as face value as a lot of people act like it is. Then we have, of course, the original trilogy. I can't, I can't even begin. These are all steel books, by the way. It's a pretty common set, um, but I got it, uh, one year for Christmas. Um, and yeah, it's an amazing set, and I'm glad that I have all of them. Um, Empire Strikes Back is pretty much my go-to, like, it's my gut reaction best movie of all time, but, um, I feel like Star Wars is a little too sacred to rank or, um, compare to other movies, so. Moving on, we have Whiplash, a very artistic and beautiful film. It's amazing, it's incredible. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. This is a steelbook. I don't remember where I got it, but it's an amazing movie, so go watch it if you haven't seen it. Next I have Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead. Uh, Hot Fuzz is one of my favorite movies. I love it. Um, it is both parts hilarious, uh, awesome action, and actually like a thriller. So, amazing movie. I like Shaun of the Dead, but not nearly as much as Hot Fuzz. And then we're moving on to Edgar, another Edgar Wright film, uh, Baby Driver. Um, this movie's pretty good. This is, again, a steelbook. And if you're a collector, you're probably looking at my steelbooks that are sitting right next to each other, and it's making you cringe. I am gonna get some slips for these. I promise. I just haven't gotten around to it, and I don't move them that much, uh, and I'm very careful when I do. Um, but yeah, I am gonna get some slips for the steelbooks, so don't worry. Uh, but yeah, Baby Driver is not as good as I thought it was the first time I watched it, but it's still a very good film, and wonderfully made. Okay, next movie is Drive. I put it right by Baby Driver because it basically is the better version of Baby Driver. And it has, literally has me in it. There I am right there on the front. It's literally me. I had a lot of fun uh, working on this movie. So, yeah, very good movie. Next we have one of my favorite movies, The Matrix. I told you I had a better edition. This is The Steelbook. Very cool steelbook. Um, I love The Matrix. Uh, when I first watched it, it made me like go through like a grunge phase where I wore a black trench coat and thought that I was Neo, and I think a lot of people have done that, but yeah. One of my favorites of all time. Then we have the Alien uh, collection. Um, the first Alien is amazing. This is actually the first four movies I got at, at a at a Walmart um, for like a really good deal. Or no, it was Best Buy. But um, I love the first Alien, and 
aliens. Um, the fourth and fifth one are, or the third and fourth one are terrible. And then, I actually, I'm one of the people that likes Prometheus. Um, I, I know it has its problems, but, um, the main lady in it is awesome, and there's some scenes in it that are incredible. And then Alien Covenant is not very good. It's not very good at all. Um, but yeah. Then we have up here, right next to it, an alien is sort of like this next thing, too. Um, me and my brothers have some, like, very sacred movies, and, like, Tron is one of those. Um, Alien. And then, uh, Mad Max. Uh, it's a trilogy. Um, because Thunderdome doesn't exist. Thunderdome doesn't, Thunder, Thunderdome does not exist, I promise you, it's not real. So, that's why I have the complete trilogy right here. Um, we watch Fury Road first, and then I have to go back and watch the other ones. Road Warrior is amazing, and, uh, Fury Road is one of the best movies I think ever made, and one of my favorites, and one of the ones that my dad always likes to watch, so. Alright, now I have my Steven Spielberg collection right here, starting with Schindler's List, a uh, very hard to watch movie, uh, but a very good movie. And it's classic, um, classic Steven Spielberg. Then we have E.T., classic Halloween movie, and just fun all around. Then we have, I'm having trouble getting this up, The Goonies, a very fun movie that I waited way too long to watch. Uh, yeah, classic. Um, we have Steven Spielberg's probably most underrated movie, Catch Me If You Can. I don't know how this one slipped through the cracks. It's an amazing movie with Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's really good. Then we have Jaws 1 and 2. Um, I, I don't think I've seen any other Jaws movies other than the first two. I like the first, I like the first one the best. I think. Yeah, I, yeah. And then... A movie that used to be my favorite movie, Saving Private Ryan. This movie's incredible, hard to watch, and I think it was the second R-rated movie I ever saw. Um, but yeah, amazing movie, one-of-a-kind movie. Um, but yeah, put these back on the shelf. Next up we have The Revenant. Uh, this is just the regular Blu-ray edition, and then the 4K edition, which I bought later. I could gush about this movie for an hour and a half. I think it's incredible. I think it's the best, hands down, the best movie ever made. Um, I don't know. I can't. I can't say enough about it. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. But ask your parents because it's hard. So, and it's pretty dark. All right. Next, we have. I I missed out seeing The Revenant in theaters, much to my chagrin, because I knew that it was going to be good. I saw the commercial. And I was like, that movie's going to be good, and. Uh, I wasn't going to go to the theater to watch it with my brothers because they weren't quite old enough where I felt comfortable going to see an R-rated movie with them in theaters that I hadn't seen. And I didn't think my dad would like it, which is funny because it's like one of his favorite movies. Um, but I missed out, and so I didn't go watch it. And then when I when it came out, I watched it, um, and I couldn't believe that I had missed it in theaters. So one of these days, I'll we'll either rent a theater <laughs> with a group of friends and watch it, or I'll wait for it to be released in theaters and watch it. But I did not miss out on 1917 in theaters. I went and watched it because I knew it was going to be good, and I didn't want to miss it, and it was awesome. It was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. It was incredible. The sound in the theater was amazing, um, and it looks all like one shot. Uh, they they made it look a lot like one shot with fake cuts and stuff. And some of them, I, I don't know how they did it, but very, very good, especially with how low of a budget they had. Next, Inception. Um, I have two copies of this. This is just like a Walmart edition um, that I thought was cool. And then just the regular, like, holographic version. All right. Next we have all the Harry Potter movies. And these are, I don't know what edition these are. I, I don't know if they're steel books of these, but I just have the slip covers. Um, and, uh, yeah, I really like this set. Um, we have Sorcerer's Stone, or the Philosopher's Stone. Uh, and then we have the Chamber of Secrets. Um, and I think the first two have slowly become like my favorite ones because there's something about them being kids and being younger that gives it like such a more childlike feeling. Like when you watch it, it makes you feel like you're a kid. It makes you, I don't know, feel like there's magic in the world. And then we got Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, and I like that one. Uh, that's when they switched Dumbledore's, and, uh, they changed how Hogwarts looked a little bit, changed Harry's wand, um, and, yeah, that's when the series started getting darker. And then we have The Goblet of Fire, The Order of the Phoenix, which, personally, is my favorite of the Harry Potter movies, and then The Half-Blood Prince. All these covers are so cool, and I think I got these for 
Christmas one year. And then we have The Deathly Hallows Part 1 and Part 2. I think I actually, Part 1 might be my other favorite, um, movie, uh, other favorite Harry Potter movie, but I don't know. They're all really good, and it's hard to rank them all. Um, next we have Jojo Rabbit. Uh, this is a Taika Waititi film, and it's very dark, um, and depressing, but also very hilarious, uh, like no other movie has done. Um, but yeah, very, very good movie. And then we have uh, World's End, which is connected, not really connected, but it's made by the same people that did Shaun of the Dead and uh, Hot Fuzz. It's considered a trilogy, but I don't remember what the trilogy is called. Uh, but yeah, good movie. My least favorite of the trilogy. Next, we have the Man With No Name trilogy. Uh, this has the good, the bad, and the ugly in it. That's the final one in the trilogy. Um, but the good, the bad, and the ugly is actually my least favorite of the trilogy. The first one, I think, is the best. A uh, fistful of dollars, and then a few dollars more, and then the good, the bad, and the ugly would be my ranking, and that's the order that they came out. I don't know how the good, the bad, and the ugly stole the show from the other two, but, um, yeah, if you haven't ever seen it, go watch the first two, because they're amazing. Then we have my pulp, or uh, then we have my Quentin Tarantino collection. I got Reservoir Dogs on 4K. This movie is hugely underrated. Some of his best work in the first film that he made. Then we have um, Pulp Fiction. This is the um, 4K steelbook. Um, I got that for Christmas last year, and I love Pulp Fiction. I love Quentin Tarantino. He's probably my favorite, which I know is most like a lot of people's. But then I have Kill Bill One and Two. Kill Bill One is amazing. Kill Bill Two is all right. My second favorite movie of all time, or third, uh, Django Unchained. This movie is, I can't say enough about it. It's just amazing. It's, I don't know, it's amazing. I love westerns, and this is like everything you'd want from a modern western, and then it has amazing writing, and Jamie Foxx is amazing in it, and I don't know. It's an amazing movie, and one that my dad likes too. So my dad sort of like cycles through, like my dad's like, hey, we should watch a movie you know, it's either going to be like a handful of movies, and that's one of them. All right, then The Hateful Eight. This movie's okay. It's okay. It's not his best work. Not his best. Uh, and then Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is his newest film, and it was a very good movie. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'm also missing I Don't Own Jackie Brown or Death Proof, and I haven't seen him. Um, and then I have another movie by Quentin Tarantino, um, but it has a cuss nasty in the name, so I'm not going to show that on, because this is a family-friendly channel, <laughs> but it's inglorious, um, and that movie's amazing, it's incredible, and he handles the subject matter greatly in that movie, and it's one of his most serious films, um, and the opening scene, I think, is just one of the best films, <laughs> best scenes ever put to film, so yeah, go watch it, but ask your parents. Next we got um, Maze Runner 1 and 2, I haven't seen the third one, the second one wasn't super good, I liked the first one when it came out, but um, the main guy in it is sort of like a major Mary Sue, he never does anything wrong, so it's sort of, I don't know, annoying to watch. Alright, then we have everything everything everywhere all at once um this movie is awesome i didn't know if it was gonna be good or not a24 will either have like the best film you've ever seen or like the most pretentious thing you've ever seen so yeah i didn't know what to expect with this but it was amazing the action was incredible and the writing was great and it was just it was just a delight to watch then we have the Ip man trilogy i don't really remember it it's been a while since I've watched it. Then we have the Mission Impossible, three of the Mission Impossible movies. Uh, I got the fourth, fifth, and sixth one. Uh, the first one's all right. The second one's terrible. The third one is very medium. It's not bad. It's not good. Um, and then the fourth one's amazing. The fourth one's my probably my favorite one. It's 
amazing movie. And then the fifth one is probably my next favorite one. And then the sixth one. Uh, we went to see the, the newest one, the seventh one in theaters. I was a little disappointed with it. It, it. it didn't meet my expectations, I guess I should say. But, yeah. Next we have uh, one of my favorite movie series of all time, and that's John Wick. Uh, the first time I watched the first John Wick uh, was in 2015, and I wasn't a fan of it. But I was going through like a phase where if the writing wasn't the best thing you'd ever seen, then it was just a bad movie. But um, John Wick is so much more than just writing. It is flawless action. Um, wonderful filmmaking. I, I can't say enough about them. My favorite is probably the fourth one or the second one, but they're all good, and I think one of my favorite fight scenes is in the third one, even though I'd probably rank the third one my least favorite. Okay, next we have Rocky. Now, Rocky, um, I watched the first one. This, this has all six of them, all the way up to Rocky Balboa. I haven't seen all of them. I've seen the first four. I watched the first one, and I was like, that isn't very good. And then I watched the second one, and it made me like the first one. And then the third one wasn't very good, and then the fourth one was uh, pretty good. So, yeah, that's my opinions on Rocky. <laughs> and then we have Blade Runner 1 and 2. This is um, Blade Runner 2049. Um, is another movie that has me in it. Um... If you don't reckon, that's literally me. So, yeah, I I worked really hard on that movie, and I'm really proud of it. So, yeah. Now we're into, like, my horror movie section. There's a lot of horror movies that I have to buy. Um, one that I'm going to buy soon is um, a A24 Talk to Me. Wow, that movie was incredible. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. I know Halloween just passed, but... It was amazing, and it was a great horror movie, and, uh, yeah, it was on par with, um, one of the next movies, which is Hereditary, which is another one by A24, and I know that A24 doesn't actually, like, produce them most of the time, they just distribute them, uh, which is the case with, I'm pretty sure, Talk to Me and Hereditary, but, um, but yeah, both Hereditary and Talk to Me feel like they're made by people who care about making movies and making films, so... Yeah, very good. And then we have... I have a couple movies here. I have The Thing, amazing horror movie, spectacular thriller. Uh, and then we have Friday the 13th, which was really cool to watch this year on Friday the 13th in October. Um, I think this movie's amazing. I think it's doggone close to a masterpiece as far as indie films go. Um, which is weird because it's one of the lower rated horror movies from that era. Like... Halloween is ridiculously high. I, I'm not a huge fan of Halloween, but then Friday the 13th is ridiculously low, and I felt like this movie deserved a lot higher for rating. And then we have Scream, another iconic horror movie, which is amazing. Then we have The Shining. What can I say? It's amazing. Here. We have Sweetney Todd, the only musical that I own. Um, this movie's amazing. Uh, and like with the Tron thing, if I was approached by a uh, like a streaming service and they were like, "Hey, we'll give you all the money to make a, a TV show," I'd be I would make a mini series of this that wasn't a musical because you could make this so good. And it is a good movie. It's a great movie, and the music is amazing in it. But I feel like it would be really cool if they made a version. That had, like, the same aesthetic and everything, but wasn't a musical. Uh, I think it would do really good, too. And then we have It. I'm a fan of the first one. Don't like the second one. Uh, Woman in Black. One of the most generic mid horror movies ever. But one of the first I've ever watched. Psycho. One of the most iconic, classic horror movies, and it's amazing. Rear Window. It's not really a horror movie, but it's, like, a thriller, and we watch it, um during October, and I could watch this movie over and over and over again. It's so good. Uh, and then we have uh, Silence of the Lambs. I mean, I'm having trouble putting it back in. Okay. This is the last, bu this is the last bunch for this row. We got Predator Trilogy. I've only seen one of these, and it was 
It was interesting. <laughs> um, I Am Legend, an alright movie. A movie that slipped through the cracks as being one of the best movies of all time, which is Shutter Island, as Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio. This movie is crazy because you could watch it over and over and, and catch the, it has so much rewatchability. It's amazing and it has one of the biggest plot twists of any movie ever and it's just amazing and incredible. Then we have a very confusing but very cool movie, Donnie Darko. Very awesome movie. And then we have a movie that's not very fun to watch but also is really good, Prisoners. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, Hugh Jackman just knock it out of the park with this movie.
many shows in this video because it's getting pretty long. But if you guys like this one and you want to see my movie or my TV show collection, I'll probably do that in another video uh, and just talk more about it because I don't have nearly as many TV shows as I do movies. Okay. So. Next, I have Kingsman Secret Service. This is a very nice addition and a very great movie that I thought was going to be terrible but was actually really good. I haven't watched the second one, but I did watch The Kingsman, like The Kingsman, and it wasn't very good, so. Alright, then we have Taxi Driver. I bought this movie before I watched it, and it was okay. I need to watch it again. I watched it a long time ago. I made like a sound when I did that. Actually sounded really good. Uh, but yeah, this is like a book of it. It's a very cool addition. Then we have Gladiator. Uh, this movie's okay. I'm not a huge fan of it. I think it gets blown out of the water by um, Braveheart, which are, those two movies somehow go hand in hand a lot. Braveheart is miles better than Gladiator in my opinion. I love this movie. Um, then we have another Mel Gibson film, Axel Ridge. It's an awesome movie uh, based on a true story and Andrew Garfield hits it out of the park in this film. So then we have somewhere in here we have more more Mel Gibson. Where is that? I figured I'd get the Mel Gibson stuff out of the way. There it is. Alright. We have The Patriot. An awesome movie that gives me chills every time I watch it. I like Mel Gibson pretty well as far as movies go, like, and making movies. I don't really know much about him as a guy, but, and then we have The Passion of the Christ. Um, it's a very, I think, accurate uh, uh, depiction of the passion and the events that happened. Um, there is a lot of slow motion in it, um, but yeah, still a good movie and the first R-rated movie that I've ever, that I ever saw, so. And then we got, um, The Social Network. This is like the weird blacked out version of it. Uh, pretty good David Fincher movie. We got some more David Fincher here. My movies are falling over here. Alright. Alright. We got some more David Fincher here. We got Seven. One of the best thrillers of all time. Then we have, I actually have two different versions of Fight Club here. Um. This one's just like a slipcover, but this one's a steelbook, so it's a very cool steelbook. But yeah, it makes good sounds, too. Alright, next we have The Godfather. I need to watch this movie again. I watched it once um, a long time ago, and I don't really remember it. I haven't seen the second or third one. Then we have Goodfellas, a pretty good movie. Then we have, let's see what we have here. We have somehow the highest rated movie of all time, Shawshank Redemption. It's a good, it's a good movie, but highest rated of all time. I don't, I don't know how that happened. Um, then we have Birdman, um, and that's the guy who directed The Revenant. This is his first film. I'm not going to say his name because I'm going to butcher it. Um, but yeah, he's an amazing director, and this movie is awesome, and it all looks like one shot, and is great. No Country for Old Men. This movie doesn't have any music in it, and it's a very good movie. Yeah. Then we have Sherlock Holmes uh, 1 and 2. This is the Robert uh, Downey Jr. version. Mm. I think these aren't very highly reviewed, but I actually like them. I think that they're pretty good, minus Robert Downey Jr.'s accent. Uh, these are the last three that I have here um, in this collection. I got Lone Survivor, a very hard-to-watch movie. Um, but very good and very well made. Um, it's based on a true story, incredible true story. Uh, in the Heart of the Sea, um, this is actually Ron Howard. A very beautiful film, like very visually beautiful. Uh, and good acting too. And then the last <laughs> movie that I have here, I believe, yeah, is, um, uh, King Kong, the Peter Jackson version. Uh, a very good movie, and obviously the superior Kong movie. Um, but yeah, this actually comes with the extended and theatrical version. Well, that 
is not the most epic movie to end on, <laughs> but uh, I think that's it. Um, I will probably do a movie or a TV show video in the future. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll probably post one of these every couple of years probably because my my Blu-ray collection is always changing, always getting bigger. Um, so I'll probably do more uh, in the future. And if you guys liked this video, then uh, I'll do some with my TV shows. Uh, but yeah. I think that's pretty much all I have. Thanks for watching. Um, let me know out of all these movies uh, what your favorite movie is or addition specifically for the Blu-rays. I know I don't have any really cool signed ones or anything, but um, yeah, I got some rare ones in there somewhere. Uh, but yeah, um, and also comment your favorite movie of all time. I'm just interested to know. Um, and if it's a movie that I haven't watched, then I'll probably watch it, because I love watching movies. Um, but yeah, my favorite movie is probably The Revenant, other than, like, Star Wars and, like, Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings as a whole. It's really hard to rank it, but yeah, probably The Revenant and then some other movies. I don't know. I could probably make... I know I said a lot of things were my favorite movie in this video, but, uh, or one of my favorite movies, but, um, I could make you a list sometime. It might be crazy, but yeah, um... But yeah, thanks for watching. I, this was kind of a long video. I, I would imagine it's probably going to be pretty long. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. And I hope this helped you get some sleep and relaxation. Or just was entertaining. Or something to put on in the background. I don't know. But I thought it would be fun to go through. And some people had asked me to go through my Blu-ray collection. So I did. And I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, my name's Parker, I'm the third sheep, and I want to thank you for watching One, Two, Three Sheep ASMR, and I will see you in the next one.